Ayo and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, you are cordially invited to join me on a journey, a journey of my mind. Yeah, I want to reveal to you my innermost wants, desires, secrets, dreams, the whole caboodle. Uh, this has all kind of come about because I couldn't sleep last night. Just couldn't get off. Uh, so I decided to try and go to my happy place, which sometimes helps. Just relax my mind and started imagining what my perfect day would consist of. What would happen if I controlled the world, basically. Um, and before I knew it, my mind was freed. It was released. It had gone on this massive journey. And it wasn't just like, oh, amazing, you know, you win the lottery and you're king of the world kind of thing. It all made sense because of the way my mind works. You know, I'm a logical bear kind of thing. Uh, everything in this scenario was perfect. It was logical. It could feasibly happen. And it was just a perfect day. And I suddenly thought, you should share this with your corner because it reveals so much about you. You know, it's a great way to let people know what's inside of Callum. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. If you want to share your perfect day with me, do comment it down below. I will be reading through them and replying. Um, the only limit on it is your imagination. Right, okay, I'm going to try and focus now and get back in the frame of mind I was the other night. So, I wake up. I am in the Caribbean, the Caribbean. Um, I am in a really posh resort, one of those kind of I don't know, they're like shacks, but they're not really shacks. They're on stilts and the seas beneath you and you've got great big four-poster beds. I'm staying in one of them, right? Anyway, I'm woken up to the gentle tones of Radio 4, an urgent broadcast from them. David Cameron was killed last night in a weird and strange accident. He was trampled to death by a, a pack of feral pigs. Uh, not only was he trampled to death in some kind of act of divine retribution, they also bummed him as well just before he died. It was really payback for the weirdness that he was doing with pigs in his youth. Anyway, it doesn't bother me. In fact, it quite pleases me. I think David Cameron was a massive spasmoid. I get out of bed, I pull back the covers, I'm just there in my pants with a wry smile on my face. The door to my little shack thing opens. In walks Kirstie Allsop. She's wearing a maid's outfit, like a, you know, sexy French maid's outfit. I can't believe it. This is Kirstie Bloody Allsop come to service my room. She sees the look of surprise on my face and she says, don't worry, I know what you're thinking. Yes, I am Kirstie Allsop. She starts to explain to me that she's filming a special TV show where her and Phil take over a resort, an alien resort, and they try and sell it. Um, and as part of it, she's doing a bit of mayor duty today. Anyway, as she's explaining all this to me, her eyes start to wander, to loop me up and down. She notices I'm just there in my pants. Her eyes are starting to focus on my little Callum. Her words start to fail. She gets mixed up. She can no longer speak. She's just looking at me with hunger and desire. She says to me, you look a little bit like my partner, Phil Spencer, who I film with, but kind of more manly. You look like Phil with balls. In a moment of perfect clarity, I have a really cool line waiting. I said, Kirsty, why don't you come here and I will fill you. She loves it. She leaps into my arms. She's excited by the fun yet sexy line I've pulled out. We're a mass of emotions at this point. Tangled limbs, you know, words are lost in a breathless kissing session. Uh, it moves on. Full boom boom he's had, yeah. I mean, it's urgent, it's passionate. Unfortunately, it's quite quick because it's been a while since I've had boom boom and, you know, I first bunker to the ceiling once the floodgates are open and the, you know, reserves, the backed up reserves are let loose. Uh, but she loves it. She, you know, she boom boom, she gets where she needs to be, put it that way. She looks at me afterwards and says breathlessly, I've never had anything like that. That was the best I've had. Me, on the other hand, and this is where the story gets realistic, it's not just, you know, I do Kirsty and we end up married. I'm starting to feel withdrawn, emotional. This often happens when I'm with a woman, you know, you put so much onto it, you think you're going to meet the woman of your dreams and it's all going to be, you know, marriage and love afterwards. However, I'm becoming emotionally withdrawn from her. I don't know what it is with women, you know, have I got an inherent distrust of them? I mean, it is difficult to trust anything that bleeds for five days a month and doesn't die. But I think it's more than that. I think I haven't met the right woman and that realisation seeps into me. But I don't want to let Kirsty know that. You know, she's a lovely lass. So I just turn to her and I say, you know what, Pep, that was cracking for me as well. Uh, why don't you clean yourself up now and then you can finish cleaning the room. I've got to go out and do some work now, but leave me a number and I will try and phone you. I've given her hope, you know. Anyway, I stick on some clothes and I leave. I walk out into the resort. A sip of water at this point, I'm talking quite a lot. Anyway, I walk out into the resort. 
I am meeting the chief executive of Tic Tac. He's got in touch with me. He wants to make the whole situation right. He wants to make me the real Mr. Tic Tac. Anyway, I'm meeting, we film an advert. It's great. I'm taste testing, I'm doing proper dancing. You know, he cannot believe my talent. He pays me cash in hand, loads of money, six figures, you know, fair day's wage, wage for a fair day's work. Loving it. The whole situation, everyone hating on me for my head, it suddenly doesn't matter. I've won from it. I'm happy as Larry. So, I stroll down to celebrate my new wealth and I go to a bar by the beach. I order a beer. Next to me is Alan Shearer, Blackburn legend. Anyway, we start talking about Blackburn. He's all, you know, it was the best, you know, time in my career. I never played as well as I did there. I love the club. A little guy who we didn't even notice who was sitting behind Alan pipes up. It's Bill Bloody Gates. I mean, he can't even make eye contact with us because he's like a beta male, you know, he's a little geek and, you know, we're big alpha males. But he tells us that hearing us speak about Blackburn with such passion has ignited a love in him. He's going to buy the club, take it over from the Benkies and make them the biggest club in the world. I'm bloody delighted about this. Not least because Bill Gates is going to put me on the board and I'm going to have a say in the way the club is won. Um, anyway, me and Shearer, we decide to celebrate. He's got a few mates down on the beach. It's Sutton, it's Colin Hendry. It's basically the Blackburn Rovers 1995 title winning uh, squad. Uh, we play five a side. I play even better than Tim Flowers in goal. Everyone loves me. Anyway, I walk back to the bar afterwards. I'm parched. It's a hot day and I order myself a lager top. Goes down sweet, half of it, at the draft. None of that weird gassy bloating that you sometimes get. It just feels good. Other half, done. <laughs> Moisture dripping down the glass. It's the perfect beer on a cool day. I let out a celebratory burp. Big, bold burp. Like, you know, and, and I look round, and there's a pretty woman there. And she's not disgusted by this. She likes it, in fact. The fact that I burp, she thinks is funny. She laughs. I realise that this it's Khaleesi from Game of Thrones. She's sitting there, right? She comes up to say hello to me. Just as she comes up, Mr. Tic Tac executive comes round the corner, right? And he's got with him a famous film director. He sees me and Khaleesi standing there next to each other and he exclaims, what is this chemistry between the two of you? He talks to us about a Game of Thrones follow-up called The King. Basically, it is set 100 years after the whole Game of Thrones. The, the, the realm is settled again, but it needs a strong leader. They want me to be that. They want Khaleesi to play my wife, but she would really be the daughter of Khaleesi. But it, 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 it doesn't matter. It's the same girl who plays Khaleesi. We start talking about it being Khaleesi. It turns out we get on like a house on fire. There is none of this weird kind of emotional withdrawing after we have Boom Boom, and we do have Boom Boom. And because of the Boom Boom me and Kirsty also had earlier, there's none of this ending too early. You know, it is lazy, lackadaisical lovemaking. The two of us know we're entwined. Our bodies, souls are connected. That is my future. Being in a Game of Thrones follow-up called The King with Khaleesi playing my wife and she's going to be my real life wife. And we have loads of children. I'm happy ever after. Yeah, that is my perfect day. As I say, do let me know below what you do on your perfect day. And if you like the video, leave a thumbs up. If it was terrible, leave a thumbs down. Well, actually, not if it's terrible. That's too harsh. That shouldn't be the um, criteria. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Uh, just let me know your, your thoughts, really. We're all about honesty here in the corner.